Hello! Hi guys, welcome back to One Man's Junk. Okay guys, we've been away for a while, we've been busy getting ready for RetroCon, which, can you believe it, is upon us at last. RetroCon will be coming up next weekend, so I hope to see you there. Uh, I want to show some uh, some of my little finds from recently, but I'm also hoping to show you guys some of the things I'm going to be taking to RetroCon. So, stay tuned, let's have a look. So you may have noticed I have these sitting here. This of course is army gear, and um, I'm going to go into it a little bit further when I do my action figure identification, um, but it's quite an interesting line. Um, it's released by Galob, um, it's from 1989, so it's just after Micro Machines were launched, and actually, if anything, it's a precursor to the Action Fleet. But just before we do that, let's have a look at some of my ordinary or general finds, as I like to call them. So first up, we have this little plush, or as, uh, when I was a kid, we used to call them soft toys, but now they're known as plush. Um, it is modern, it is the Ghostbuster symbol. It's from a company called Funny, but spelt with a PH, so honey, funny. Anyway, I really liked it, uh, it's nice and clean, it was nice and cheap, so certainly I'll be adding that to my collection. And let's follow that up with none other than The Gladiator. This is a Matchbox Robotech um, mech, Android. That's what, basically a Robotech Matchbox fighter, it's vintage, nice, nice little figure, not one you see too often. Uh, not incredibly valuable, but certainly a great little figure. Then we have this cool little guy here, this is a Troll Warrior. Um, but this isn't the regular one you see. Usually you see them in the action figure uh, scale. This is like a little miniature PVC, so that's why I'm showing him off. He's quite interesting. Um, you'll do notice he has his good luck hair. Um, even his little um, accessory, which does not come off, has hair too, and it's even braided. Now, I'm not sure if that was a previous owner braided it or if it came braided. Um, my other question is, the tips seem to be highlighted, so I'm not sure if that's dirt or, again, if that's the way it was designed. Still a cool little figure, but if anybody knows the answer to that, please let me know. Um, now it is a modern figure, it is a knockoff, it is made in Mexico, but yes, you may have noticed it is in fact an Incredible Hulk for the last Avengers movie, but they use the He-Man mold. How genius is this, folks? They just use the He-Man mold, there's not much articulation to it, but top half green, bottom half blue, boom! There's your Hulk figure right there. What's next? Um, so we have featured this line before, it's from Pace Toys, and it is none other than Earth Force. Now there is a little clue, you see it right there, EF, and it does kind of look like exchangers, but it's not, it's too big. And guys, here we go, we have a fairly innocuous looking little grey pistol. Well, this belongs to none other than the Shadow from Kenner. Okay, here's one that's fairly interesting. And I know this is going to be some of you here watching this at home saying, really, you didn't know what this was or you don't know what this is? Yes, that's right. This actually belongs to Kenner Star Wars and it's from the Hoth Ice Planet playset. And there's actually a big clue right here, this piece of plastic. So there's actually a few gun turrets and guns that um, came with this feature, so that way when you turn them it does of course have the sound feature. Here's a lovely interesting one. So I've actually owned this gun for quite a while now, and due to the scale, I incorrectly assumed that it belonged to G.I. Joe, of course the 12 inch figure such as the 25th anniversary. However, with a bit of research, I have since discovered that it is none other than small soldiers and it belongs to one of the rare, rarer, I should say, vehicles. Here's a nice easy one for you here. Yes, you should recognize it. It does in fact belong to Chief Chirpa, uh, Star Wars, Kenner. Uh, here's a really good one. I've had this accessory for well over a year now and I've found it several times actually. Now, what really threw me is that I assumed it was a gun and this is the handle. I have since discovered that it is in fact Fisher Price Adventure People and it is the engine for the speedboat. Yes, it clips on. So you can see it clips on here. There's the handle so it can be held. Here's a 
cool little piece. So I dug this one out the basement. This belongs to none other than Advanced Dungeons and Dragons and it belongs to one of the helmets. Now this is a great, great piece. This here has been, again, sitting at the bottom of a tray of G.I. Joe's because I wrongly assumed it was a G.I. Joe net. It is for Snake Mountain. It is the net from Snake Mountain. It is missing, of course, the holders. Correction, it was missing the holders. So that's one of the holders here. This is the net. It does, of course, plug into uh, Snake Mountain and that will be coming with us to Retro. Here's one that I picked up again recently from a good friend. Um, I believe this is a tribute to Muscle and it was called Suckle and it is released by Sucklord who was in fact in an episode of the Goldbergs and I believe this is A.S. Swipe would be the name of the character. That's a great little find. Looks just like a little well-colored dinosaur but it is in fact Mighty Max and it came with one of the uh, smaller, I believe it, they're called the horror heads. That's the one with the caveman. I'll show you a picture. Okay, guys, how cool are these? So we don't know much about them. I reached out to a few friends. Um, our understanding is it's some kind of Kishi sports ball uh, gumball machine figure. Um, my understanding is that, of course, it had some kind of official release in Japan, but over here it was just bootlegged and distributed through gumballs. So it's a gumball premium. Commonly misidentified, it's very hard to identify it because it comes from a very obscure line. Now, most people will wrongly assume that that is Mighty Max. And they believe it comes with the Mighty Max Arachnoid playset, um, but that's because they can't see the scale. If you can see the scale, you will see it's larger. And if you know, you'll know it belongs to none other than Trend Master's Alien Hunter line. We will actually be talking about this line in a few moments. So army gear would basically be items that look like general army gear, but are in fact playsets. So let's have a look at this grenade here. But more importantly, you'll open it up and whoa, look at that. There you go, you see, and it launches, boom, the little Jeep. So funnily enough, this little Jeep actually, I've had this for, again, quite a while. It's one of the first pieces I picked up. I wasn't able to identify it. I always had a feeling that it was something, you know, half decent because it is very well made, but there's absolutely zero markings on it. Now, if you're wondering what started this little obsession with army gear, well, this is it right here. So I had these two items. I've had them, as I said, uh, along with many other items that I am unable to identify. I finally was managed to crack the code, did some research, and these actually perfectly demonstrate the whole concept. So you have here these two, what look to be military ins insignias, um, you know, um, some kind of uh, ribbons. But in fact, if you turn it around, boom! And there you go, almost like magic. Not quite, but almost. You see here, we have the two ribbons that have now become a military jeep and some kind of flying spacecraft. I think definitely the jeep, you know, there's a wee bit more to it here. Um, it's definitely a lot cooler. Um, this, well, okay, I guess, you know, if you want to complete the line. Now, you may remember the large Army Gear water bottle that I had on the table at the beginning of the show. Well, when I picked that up, it was unfortunately just a shell. But again, with some research, I was happy to discover that I actually had a lot of the accessories that came with it, but mixed up in my unidentified bin. So amongst which would be this clip-on gun here. So you see it's got two turrets. It is a contrasting red with grey, and of course it's got the little clip right here. So this piece here is actually quite a common piece. It's very commonly misidentified. Even by myself, I wrongly assumed it belonged to Exo Squad. Most people will wrongly guess that it belongs to Roboblox, um, but I can tell you that it does in fact belong to Army Gear. And if you see this piece here, which of course is very self-explanatory, the name is right on it. There you go. That's how it works. 
Okay guys, I hope you managed to pick up some information or at least learn something from my action figure identification round we just had there. Um, but without further ado, finds of the day. So let's get the ball rolling with something very interesting. Um, during the mid 90s, the, the company known as Trendmasters, which you may have heard of because of course they did do a lot of uh, Godzilla action figures, um, amongst other not so popular lines like Lost in Space. Yeah. Um, but what they also did was they did this really cool little kind of knockoff, all encompassing line uh, known as Alien Hunter or Operation Alien or Operation Bug. Here we go. So this is Operation Bug and you see we have Alien Hunter right next to it. You see how the graphics, the color scheme, it's all very similar. So as I was saying, this is this kind of 90s, uh, late 90s um, where Trendmaster is kind of picking up on that gross out gang, you know, that trash bag bunch, that Z-Bot, that, you know, exactly what we love. Um, and this is slots right into it. Um, so this one here, of course, I will be taking it to Retrocon, but as you can see, it is just one of the best toys you possibly could have imagined, or sorry, you could have hoped to have received as a child. You have a lab here where you can dissect uh, giant scary bugs, tarantulas. Um, there's even like dyes here at the side, so you know you can mix it in. So when you cut it open, you know like all these the blood and guts oozes out and what have you. So certainly. This is a great, great toy, and of course I'll be very happy to bring it RetroCon if you have any questions or if, you, if it's what you're looking for, come to Philadelphia, PA. We'll be there, we'll have it. Alright guys, so with RetroCon just around the corner, I decided I needed to do something a little bit special. So I was lucky enough to form a contact with a person who is located in Brazil who sells toys, just like myself. And I asked him for something special. I wanted something that was released only in Brazil, but would appeal to buyers and collectors here in the US. So I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but the very popular line from Mattel, The Secret Wars, actually continued in other countries. So most people are aware that there's three figures that were released only in Europe. That was uh, Iceman, Electro, and Constrictor. But there's also vehicles that were released, again, also only in Europe and only in Brazil. So in Europe, you, had, you actually had a cargo truck, which only has the Marvel Secret War decals on the side, and I will dig out a picture for you. It is extremely rare. It is highly sought after, highly valuable, but not really a great toy. However, in Brazil, under the label of Gulliver, or Gulliver, which released the Mattel products, they continued the line, and they actually produced a castle of Spider-Man, a castle of Doom, and... That's right, they did the turbo jet, but they made one for Spidey. So you see it's in the Spider-Man's colors. We have the red and the blue. Here now, of course, it is missing the little whistle here that, the, sorry, the whistle and lock that unlocks the secret compartment. Um, but as you can see, it's got the decals here, um, lovely colors. And if you are a collector of Marvel Secret Wars, well, you finally have a chance to own it. But that's not all. That's right, I managed to pick up the turbo cycle for Kang as well. So how about that guys, really great, something you don't see very often. So of course they did release here in the US the Captain America Turbo Cycle and the Doom Cycle, um, but of course the color scheme is completely different. So if you are a mad collector like myself or a completionist, this is going to be a great opportunity to do so. Thanks for joining us guys, we will be back again before you know it with a lovely He-Man special, we're going to show you all the He-Man and Masters of the Universe stuff that I'll be taking to RetroCon, so stay tuned.